Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today on Tundra Tactical, we'll be taking a look at my AR-15. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and let's start the show. Alright guys, so over the last year I have completely rebuilt my AR from an Adams Arms piston gun into more of like a parts build gas impingement system. Now for those who don't know the difference, a piston gun is literally that. It uses a short stroke piston and the gas pressure operates that piston pushing the bolt back and loading the next round in. A gas impingement system uses the hot gas from the round that's being fired, recycles it back into the chamber and that's how the operation of the bolt on an impingement system works. So before we go too in depth into the rifle and the parts involved, I wanted to share some of the things I learned in building the rifle along the way. I bought a piston gun for the exact same reason pretty much everybody else buys a piston gun. It's easy to clean and they're extremely reliable in their operation. But here's the problem. Once I got the AR bug and wanted to start modding my gun, it was really difficult to do. The major obstacle that I had to overcome was the piston block in this gun was absolutely massive and it made it very difficult to find a low weight, low profile handguard. There were a few options out there, but honestly, they were extremely expensive, and most of them were still quite a bit heavier than the impingement systems out there. And ultimately, this is what drove me back to an impingement-based system. So after completing the build and using it for a couple of months, I did find that while theoretically a piston gun does operate in a cleaner, more reliable fashion, there was practically very little difference between the two. I think it's important to have an idea of the role you want your rifle to serve prior to starting your build. For myself personally, this was balancing the performance and comforts that you get on a nice competition gun, but still being able to trust my rifle under less than ideal conditions. So I was initially nervous about gutting the gun for parts and going back to an impingement build, but with the benefit of hindsight, I'm sure glad that I did it. So let's take a closer look at my AR-15. So starting off and keeping things simple, we stuck with the AA-15 lower from Adam's Arms that came with the gun originally. Unless you're an ounce saving machine, we don't see too much of a difference in quality in all of the different AR-15 lowers out there for this price range. We had an old Magpul MOE pistol grip lying around, so keeping with the theme of simplicity, that did end up replacing the stock pistol grip on the gun. The first real upgrade for me was the Airborne Arms Geronimo Trigger. The Geronimo is a single stage drop in trigger that lets go at about 3.5 pounds. So far, I'm extremely happy with it and the performance and difference in speed it makes is phenomenal. Moving to the back of the gun in the stock, you won't find anything too special on my gun. It's a standard Magpul STR stock and I personally do like these because of their A-frame design. It makes for an easy cheek weld whether standing or going prone to go out to long range. On top of the gun, we've mounted a Burris MTAC 1x4 optic mounted on a Burris Pepper mount. I really do like the optic, and it does have some nice bells and whistles, but if I had to do it over again, I think I would have gone with something like a Strike Eagle. The main issue that I have with the MTAC is for the price, there are better options out there, and the aiming point in the center of the CQ reticle is absolutely massive, making anything past 100 yards pretty much unshootable. For handguards, we went with the 15.5 inch Odin Works O2 Lite K Mod. The handguard is an ultra lightweight free float design made from 6005 T651 aluminum. Beside the low profile and total weight of 6.7 ounces, what sold me on these handguards was the open design still allowing me access to my gas block. When it comes to the foregrips, I like to keep it simple with the MOE stubby grip for a consistent hand placement reference. There are a ton of options out there, and most of them are good choices, but it really boils down to your own taste and personal preference. Most likely I'll be changing the stubby grip out for a Strike Industries SI Link foregrip in the near future. The charging handle is bone stock for the time being, but will be changed to an extended latch charging handle from Strike Industries also in the near future. The BCG is an AIM surplus low mass bolt carrier group, and while they definitely don't compete with some of the bigger names out there in terms of build quality for BCGs, the 8.9 ounce nickel boron option comes in at only $119.95. So far we've had no issues with the AIM surplus low mass bolt carrier group, and for the cost, I'm honestly surprised at how good it works. 
With the low mass bolt carrier group installed, I've paired it with the JP Silent Capture Spring. You honestly don't get much better in this category than the JP SCS. However, it should be noted that for about half the cost, the Armaspec SRS or Stealth Recoil Spring is a great option if you're on a budget. You can check out our video on the SRS by following the link in the description below. The icing on the cake of this build is the dead air Sandman brake at the front of the gun. Up until this build, I'd pretty much only shot my ARs close to mil spec, and now I know what I've been missing. With the dead air Sandman brake and the low mass bolt carrier group, there's very little recoil and vertical muzzle movement. It's ready to mount a dead air Sandman suppressor as well. Overall, I think the dead air brake and the Geronimo trigger are my favorite parts to this build so far. That about wraps up the video guys, if you have any questions on the build or any of the parts involved, make sure to leave a comment down below, and if you dislike this video then you know what to do, but if you like the video, smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on current and future content, have a happy holidays, and as always, visit www.tundratactical.com for more entertainment.